Believe it or not, this pile of stones was once part of a network that reached from here all the way to Syria, the Knights Templar. Now, if you've heard of the Knights Templar through Assassin's Creed, you'll need to forget almost everything you learned there. In fact, they were not a cult of assassins who have existed since the beginning of human history. No, they existed from around the 12th century to about the 14th century when they were suppressed. They were founded as a kind of a combination of knights and monks whose role would be to protect Christian pilgrims on their way to the holy places and to fight battles against armies from the Islamic world. And in the first uh, few decades of their existence they had some huge successes and so it became very popular for nobles across Europe to make large donations, especially donations of land, to the Templars who then grew in wealth and power. This place and the lands around it were granted to the Knights Templar by Matilda de Lacy, which is why this area is known as Temple Town. Matilda de Lacy was one of the Norman families who had colonised uh, this part of Ireland and taken over land that had once belonged to the Gaelic Irish. So the grant of land in which she gives this area to the Knights Templar actually mentions that it had once belonged to the Ohanratis. They were, she says, the kings here. She wasn't the first of her family to make a donation like this. Her father, Hugh de Lacy, had given lands in Antrim, for example, to another order of knights, the Knights Hospitaller. And her grandfather, Gilbert de Lacy, actually became a Templar. He took the habit himself and journeyed east. Now, were there actual Knights Templar here in Kilwara? Probably not. We know from the account of the suppression of this place that there was just one man in this place when it was suppressed. Hello there. Certain brother Richard. He was probably a non-combatant member of the order, someone who looked after farms in this area. And the profit from the farms was used to fund the work of the Knights Templar throughout Europe and beyond. We have a list, in fact, of all the things that were in this place when it was suppressed. All the things that belonged here to Brother Richard, from napkins to spices. We know, for example, that Brother Richard had a pound of cumin in this place, which is one of the benefits, I suppose, of belonging to a network with strong contacts in the East. And we have a list of the, the animals that were in this place. Richard had 21 pigs, 100 ewes, and about 30 head of cattle, as well as 40 acres of wheat fields in the area. Why was this place suppressed in the early 14th century, along with the whole Templar network? It had a lot to do with money. The Templar houses, because they were so well defended, became recognised as secure places where you could deposit money. And so the Knights began to offer financial services. Say you were a pilgrim on your way to Jerusalem. You could deposit money in a Templar house in Ireland or England, and then you could withdraw it along the way in any Templar house that you found as you travelled to Jerusalem. Now, the Knights began to grow, as we mentioned before, in wealth, and many people owed them a lot of money through the financial services that they offered. And one of these was the King of France, Philip the Fair. It was he who organised the cruel suppression of the Knights Templar. There were many trumped up charges of heresy and other forms of behaviour, and the way it was organised is really extraordinary. Philip and other crowned heads of Europe who stood to benefit from the suppression of the Templars planned the arrest of all the Templars throughout Europe. This was planned in secret and very often sheriffs were sent to places near the Templars with a rolled up scroll and told to gather a certain amount of men and then on the date of the arrest they were to open this scroll and it said simply arrest all the Templars. The same thing happened in England, Spain, Italy, France, Cyprus and all the way over here in Kilwira on the Cooley Peninsula. On the 3rd of February 1308, the Sheriff of Louth, Benedict de Auberge, turned up with his heavies and a few local aristocrats and Brother Richard was arrested and the Templar possessions here were seized and placed in the hands of the Crown of England. We don't know how Brother Richard reacted. We don't know what became of him. But we can imagine that he was surprised to learn 
that the Templars, this hugely powerful network, were about to simply disappear from history. And we can imagine too that he would be surprised to discover that seven centuries later, the Templars would become famous again thanks to video games and movies.